Hey guys, we are in Toronto. We're shooting for Home Diagnosis Season 3. This is my friend Jeff. If you have not seen his interview on the Building Forms podcast, you need to check that out because he laid a whole bunch of stuff on us about a year ago. And he has helped uh, set us up with all these amazing researchers and all these cool spaces, which we are in right now, one of. Thank you very much for having us and for helping us. I do it, yeah. Absolutely. So I help a lot of people to specify how their ventilation system works in their homes. And one of the things that I've been coming up against is we have homes are not set up to be very well ventilated with outdoor air mm -hmm. until I come along. And even then I'm specifying like ASHRAE 62.2. If you don't know what that is, I'm linking on screen another video, but that's like a number that maybe means something and maybe doesn't. Everybody kind of agrees, even people who write it. Mm -hmm. Which, are you on that committee? I'm not on that committee. Okay. I'm allergic to standards. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. So we're, so we're talking to somebody who's also outside the box. So what I generally tell people is like, let's aim at the number and then be able to turn it up and turn it down if we want to. Yeah. And there's all this great equipment that's coming out now mm -hmm. um, that can do that. But we have two things. We've got dilution of outdoor air and we've got filtration of indoor air. And that's where something like a MERV 13 or MERV 16 filter, or if you really insist, a HAPA filter, which has to be gigantic to, to make up for the pressure drop. And if you don't know what a pressure drop is, I'm linking on screen now, but this is for the super nerds. So what I'd like for Jeff to, to tell us is, if we aim for a 3,000 square foot house that's got 10 foot ceilings, mm -hmm. we've got 30,000 cubic feet contained within that 3,000 square feet, right? Mm -hmm. So 30,000 cubic feet, and what you do is divide that number by 60 to find out how many CFM we'd have to run in order to clean the air mm -hmm. one time mm -hmm. per hour. So that would be 500 CFM. Mm -hmm. That's like running a one ton air conditioner all the time. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I'd love to have you talk about. Do you recommend that people leave their ther thermostat in fan on mode where it's just like constantly cycling the air? I am telling people that that's cool, that that's important to do. Do you agree? So yes, but, um, so running the fan continuously, if you have a good filter that's well installed and you're on top of changing it is offering you benefit. The little trick comes is not all fans are the same. Right, so there are some permanent split capacitor fans, some electrically commutated motor fans. They have very different efficiency. And so what I would say is do exactly what you're doing, but make sure your fan is efficient too. So instead of being like a one-time air conditioner, it's like half or less of that because you've got an efficient fan. Got it. So in new construction, if we're dealing with brand new equipment, of course it's all like the highest efficiency that we can get. But we're not talking about one air chain, one air cleaning. And by the way, there's two, there's air changes per hour at 50, which is blower door metrics. And then there's air, ex, what do you call it? I call it air cleanings now. That, just that, to make that's, I, I call it air changes per hour. And of course that's confusing. Okay, yeah. let's not do that. Just to, so air changes per hour, we'll keep that in blower door land. That's about an envelope tightness. But here we're talking about like cleaning the air. And if we are gonna make up for most of the cleaning of the air with filtration and not with outdoor dilution, mm -hmm. then how many air cleanings per hour should we be aiming for in a normal home under non-pandemic, like let's not imagine that we've got three people in quarantine inside the house, but okay. just like normal conditions. Okay, so uh, again, I always have to give the answer of it depends, but the short answer is I'm comfortable going down to a number like a half air change per hour. Uh, if the risk is such, but, um, you know, if you have a source going on in the space, cooking, something else going on in the space, then you want a bigger number. If you have uh, some incident going on in outdoor air, maybe you live near a highway and there's outdoor air pollution, then, you know, it's appropriate to go to a lower number on the outdoor air. So, um, you know, the, the, the real answer is, you know, we want to be able to have a system that's responsive, which is where you started this, but we also have to have really good guidance for people about how to control it and, you know, what are the factors that should lead them to go up or down. Interesting. Okay. And then best case scenario I had thought was five air cleanings per hour in like a COVID classroom mm -hmm. setting, but you're, you said six just a minute ago. Yeah, but there's no great science. So functionally, the difference between five and six, I'm not gonna split hairs over. Okay, okay, so so as high as, if we're taking our same house, this 3,000 square foot house with 10 foot ceilings, 
Five hertz changes per hour would be that 500 CFM times five, which is 2,500 CFM. That's like a five ton air conditioner running on its highest speed nonstop to try and filter that air through. But you're saying that we can add the ventilation, the outdoor dilution air, and the filtration, like we can, we, we can separate them and then add them together to kind of get what that is. Right, and not only that, we can add in portable filtration too. So if you have everyone's in the living room, then you can have a lower number with your central system and have a portable or a room-based system in the space where people are. Interesting. And so maybe just one portable system, if we've got families like, you know, in the tiny house, Grace and I would always find that it would be uh, the two of us, our two kids, and our two cats in the same spot all the time. Like, yeah. we were always hanging out together. Absolutely. So yeah. Probably just one HEPA portable unit, uh -huh. plus a good filtration system for your house to say a MERV 13 or something like that, mm -hmm. with the ability to run between a half an air cleaning per hour, mm -hmm. which in that analysis is 250 CFM mm -hmm. of just filtration. That's not a lot. Mm -hmm. And then up to five or six, which right. is again that 2,500, but that's depending. And, and I think probably localized is the right way to do it. Absolutely, distribution support. And okay. then the other piece on this is, what is the fraction of outdoor air that's coming into the space? And so I think ideally there would be either automatic control of that or user control of that. So that on a nice day, you know, there is no, you get free cooling under some circumstances by bringing in more outdoor air. So that's called an economizer. It's done in many commercial buildings, even most commercial buildings. And so, you know, that hasn't really been explored that much in residential buildings, but it makes a ton of sense. And, and here's the thing, by the way, that I want to caution everybody about, and obviously I'll be rolling what Jeff is telling me into my client work, mm -hmm. uh, but in homes that are new and the kind of people that I'm talking to generally are going to be very airtight. Mm -hmm. You can't just bring in a bunch of fresh air. You need to have a balance system. And ERVs, unfortunately, don't run. You know, you can't get an ERV in residential. It's going to run up to 2,500 CFM. So yeah. you can't necessarily get that max air cleaning out of just your outdoor dilution air, right? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Okay. Um, I have seen commercial engineers specking 1,800 e, uh, CFM ERVs on homes mm -hmm. uh, recently. So they're like, it seems like people are getting really excited about it. So we'll, we'll see how that works. But um, but in the meantime, make sure that you are keeping your head on straight using math, very simple math. Take your, your square footage, multiply it by your ceiling height, divide that by 60, that's your air cleaning one time per hour, and then use what Jeff is telling us, which is half to five or six. Get, be able to turn it up and down based on what you know and, and monitor. And by the way, do you think that this is possible to make totally automatic at some point? So yes, the technology is not the issue. The issue is the same thing that we always face with complicated systems is the implementation. And so we have a lot of work to do on user interfaces. So if you look back to like the 80s and 90s, there were ventilation controllers that people could turn up or down depending on how much fresh air they wanted. And the issue wasn't people knowing whether they wanted fresh air or not. The issue was people being confused by the controller. Hmm. And so there's a whole lot of like, social psychology and user behavior issues that are just as important as the pollutant concentration issues that I think about. Awesome. And also a big piece of the missing puzzle is people like you talking about this with your friends and your family and your clients if you're a professional. So make sure that you ask questions below if you have them because I have a direct line to Jeff. If you have other things to add, comment below. I respond to those personally. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.